Hey guys, Hitman89 here, I hope you're doing great. Today, we're gonna be looking at the best strategy games you should play in 2024. I picked the best games released in 2023 and 2024, so let's not waste any more time and let's have a look at the first one. Terminator Dark Fate Defiance I'm more of a skirmish mode guy who rarely finds campaigns interesting, but I played this one and I enjoyed it. The voice acting is decent, the graphics are great, oh and the destruction animations and physics are pretty good, which makes explosions very satisfying is fine to watch. I found the gameplay to be interesting as well since you have to manage your unit's ammo and fuel, get your infantry soldiers inside buildings for cover, etc. And I don't know about you, but now that I've seen what the machines are capable of, I became way nicer to chat GPT, so when the AI does actually take over, maybe it won't kill me first. Speaking of AI, that's probably the only bad thing about Last Train Home, which is an underrated World War 1 commando style tactical game. The whole thing is in real time, but you can pause, give your soldiers some orders, and then on pause and see how things play out. In addition to controlling your troops on the battlefield, completing missions and extracting safely, you'll be managing your resources too since you'll need fuel for the train as well as food and ammo for your soldiers. Last train home would be much more challenging if only the AI wasn't dumb as fuck. It's still a great game though, let me know if you tried it. Moving on to the third game, I played Dune Spice Wars back when it was still in early access and I've also played it later on, after the full release, and even though it's far from being perfect, it has a mix of RTS and 4X that I find interesting. And if you've seen the movies or played the original Dune game, which has nothing to do with this one by the way, then you know how important spice is in this universe. It's like gold, you know, control the spice and you'll control the world. Be careful when you're trying to get that shit though, cause the desert is full of big ass sandworms that are ready to swallow your army in one bite if you send too many units to the same area. Dune Spice Wars is addictive and it has a super deep political system, so if you like that kind of stuff and you can get the game for cheap, go for it. Anyway, let's have a look at the fourth game. I'm a big Narcos fan, and as the name of the game suggests, Cartel Tycoon lets you create your empire using the Plata o Plomo strategy with an interesting dirty money and legal money management system. You'll have to either build drug plantations or steal them from another cartel, connect them to your warehouses and then export the product by sea or air. It's really addictive, I started expanding and taking over other cartel territories, but the cops seized some of my warehouses, my best lieutenant got injured, and I ended up losing my city. So at least now I know what I would do if I made enough money from YouTube to finally start my drug empire. Wish me luck. No, but seriously, too bad the combat system sucks and nothing is voiced, it's just text. So, Cartel Tycoon has been out on PC and it just landed on console, if you're interested, check it out. New Cycle went into early access a couple of months ago and honestly, the current state of the game is already great. This post-apocalyptic city builder lets you lead a group of survivors from scratch all the way up to the industrial age. But that's if you can manage your resources properly, cause you'll have to boost your people's morale by satisfying their needs. No, not those needs but pretty much everything else. You gotta provide some shelter, food, entertainment, and pray those miserable fucks don't get hit by a lightning strike. Seriously though, that seems to happen a lot, and I end up losing some of my buildings and people. You'll also have to deal with storms and other harsh natural conditions. Oh, and every now and then, there are random events, so you'll be asked to take important decisions. Moving on to the next one, the first strategy game I played on PC was Stronghold Crusader. My neighbor lent me the CD, and I think I gave him Half-Life 2. The good old days. I feel like an old fuck telling you the story, so let's just talk about Stronghold Definitive Edition instead. Greetings, sire. Your stronghold awaits you. It still doesn't have a skirmish mode against the AI, which is disappointing, but at least the Definitive Edition has multiplayer and remastered graphics. Let's just hope they remake Stronghold Crusader at some point, like a full remake. But in the meantime, you could play Stronghold Definitive Edition, especially if you could get it for super cheap. Oh, and when you run out of stones to use on your catapults, you can use cows, and that alone should sell you on the game. Anyway, I've included Age of Empires 4 Anniversary Edition since it came out on Xbox last year, but also because for some reason, nobody's making classic RTS games anymore. Speaking of which, even though Age of Empires 4 is far from being the best one in the series, you could play it while waiting for Age of Mythology Retold, you know, the remake that's coming later this year on both PC and Xbox. 
So I played this game with my brother and it was fun. I spent hours preparing my defenses and building walls, but then he destroyed everything in a few seconds. Good thing I built another base just to keep on wasting his time. I still lost though. We also had some 2v1 action versus the CPU and we ended up losing. Moving on to a completely different game, Aliens Dark Descent's got a good story, it plays great and if you like real time tactical games, you'll love this one. Instead of a pause system, the game only goes into slow-mo, so you still have to make the right decision quickly. It's pretty challenging, cause sometimes everything's going just great, and then 2 seconds later, one of your guys gets abducted and half your team is dead. <laughs> Needless to say, managing your squad's stress level and making sure nobody freaks out and becomes unreliable in combat is primordial. Speaking of stress, seeing those dots pop up on the radar and then quickly get closer is nerve wracking. Let's have a look at the ninth game on my list. Against the Storm looks like a mobile game. That's probably why I wasn't really keen on trying it out, but in order to make these videos, I have to play all kinds of shitty games. Turns out, Against the Storm is actually awesome. It's a roguelite city builder with a lot of procedural generated stuff so every run is different. Another aspect that makes this game unique is that exploration is done through cutting down trees. That's how you access new glades. Some of those are dangerous and can be the end of your settlement if you're unprepared, like I was here. If you like city builders and wanna try out something that feels different and fresh, Against the Storm is for you. Now I'ma go ahead and try and future proof this video by adding 3 games that didn't come out yet, starting with the one that I'm really excited about, it's called Manor Lords. And and no, it's got nothing to do with Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord, one of my favorite strategy slash action RPG games by the way. So Manor Lords is a city builder and a real time strategy game set in medieval times. Cause apart from building your city from scratch and micromanaging its resources and units, you can raise an army and have some total war style battles. Too bad it won't have mounted units though, at least not right away. Still, if you play the demo, you know why I'm excited for this one. 21 years after Homeworld 2, we're finally getting a sequel. And by we, I mean you, cause I'm not really interested in sci-fi strategy games. Homeworld 3 has a 3 player co-op mode called War Games in addition to single player and PvP modes, so hopefully that'll keep you busy for 1-2 to two decades until they make a new one. Last but not least, Frostpunk 2 is set to release in July in early access and it'll be on Game Pass day 1, so you won't even have to buy it. Visually speaking, I think you can tell this is an Unreal Engine 5 game and hopefully it'll be as good as the first one, even though that's already a super high expectation since the first one is one of the best city builders ever. I really hope the last 3 games I showed you turn out great, otherwise this video will age like milk. And that's gonna be it for the best strategy games to play in 2024. If I helped you find a couple of good games or at least made you smile, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and maybe subscribe if you're new to the channel. As usual, thank you guys for the support, I appreciate it a lot. It's been Hitman89, see you guys very soon.